Welcome back, data scientists. My name is Manuel Amunategui, and today I'm going to talk about rapid prototyping. So I think it's a skill that every data scientist needs to know. We know we can all wrangle data, we can create you know, models, but what do we do once we have a model, right? Something we like, an idea that works. Well, you know, we extend it to the web. And um, uh, there are some very, you know, there's some phenomenal tools out there to help us easily get this to the web without worrying too much about the hardware, the architecture, the coding. One of them is the Google App Engine. It's serverless, meaning you don't have to worry about the OS, the hard drives. You just kind of mount your code out there and they will, uh, you know, it will scale with your needs, with your traffic, and you only pay for what you use. That's what I'm going to talk about today. And let me give you a taste uh, here. Let me get the URL. So of course you could have your own URL, you know, if you you know uh, if you want to swap it, this is kind of default it gives you, which is fine for our needs. And we're gonna plan a trip from Portland, Oregon to uh, Boise, Idaho. And we're gonna look for uh, florists. And we hit the map button. And it's gonna map, um, uh, it's gonna travel from Portland to Boise looking for florist within kind of a 50 mile radius and you can click on uh, one of the markers and it'll tell you what the florist name is and their rating right that's kind of the point here we're using google maps we're using the markers uh, on the maps it's, it's a great uh, uh, way of displaying right results if, if uh, you know your, your results are geographical in nature it's an easy way of doing so and you also kind of get like a, re a log of uh, how your trip is uh, working so in terms of technology it's all done in flask and um, uh, it runs on the app engine and the front end uses you know html ajax uh, this is all done dynamically every time you get a point it's going to send the coordinates back through ajax to your flask say hey where do i go next where is the next florist within 50 miles it's going to return it you plot it all the way till you get to your destination and this is very similar to what we did uh, last week except last week we we're going from san francisco to new york here now you can go from anywhere to anywhere that you want to go and even you can go from New York to London, it's going to map those points on the water. And of course, it's not going to find a florist or whatever business of interest you want to put. So that's kind of the app, right? So it's, this is not, this is definitely more involved than the Hello World application. It's not going to be the next Facebook, it's somewhere kind of in between. And that's what I want to use to illustrate how to mount a model in App Engine. Um, and, uh, you know, so you can share it to the world. So you can, be, in, in the end, share any of your ideas to the world. Okay. So. Let's get started. Um, the, the App Engine comes in two flavors. Uh, the simpler one is called the standard environment. The more complex is called a flexible environment. So if you've got like custom libraries, you're going to be using flexible. If you don't have anything too complex, you can use a standard environment. So I'm using here, everything I show is done in a standard environment and I purposefully kept it very simple. There are no like custom API calls I need to make because I'm doing everything through REST calls, right? That's what's cool about this technology is we're keeping it very simple and it's all done through REST API calls. So you can do everything in a standard environment. And a standard environment, to the, some of the advantages is it's very fast to, uh, to mount a model. And you'll see that in a second. Uh, let's talk about some prerequisites. You will need a few API keys. So uh, you will need a Google Cloud account, right? Um, if you sign up for them, uh, the links are in on the blog and the blog name is right here underneath. Uh, you, they will, um, they give you like, I think $300 of credit, credit hours. So all this stuff is not gonna cost you a dime, but you need to get an account and you need to get a Google Maps API key. Okay, that's uh, before you could run them without it. Now they're really, they're cracking down. You have to have a key and it's free to get. There's some, you know, uh, you know daily usage limits don't worry you won't you won't hit that with this and the same thing with the yelp it's free you need to get a, a yelp developer key uh it's also free and i think it's you know there's some limits uh to how much you can use a day we, we won't be hitting you know even remotely those limits in terms of technology, uh, we're talking about Python, Flask, Bootstrap. Bootstrap makes your, your, your websites look professional and sharp. JavaScript and Ajax kind of bring, you know, dynamic uh, uh, um, behavior to your web page. It's very, very key. Ajax is a phenomenal uh, technology to, to call your server without reloading the whole page. And that's how we can get these markers to, to appear every time it's calling, it's going back to the server, getting a new location and making it appear without ever uh, you know, reloading the entire page. So that's really cool. That's really nice. Um, in terms of the 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 anatomy of, of a Flask app, so this is I don't want to you know get too deep into Flask because I've done plenty of other walkthroughs on those topics. 
Um, there are a few files that you're going to need. Uh, there is the app.yaml, and that kind of tells you where your Flask Python, your main uh, Flask Python script is, and where your static and templates folders are. Uh, the app engine config it points to the, the library folder, the lib folder, and anytime you have custom Python libraries, that's where it's going to put it. So uh, it, it's going to tell it's going to tell the app where to find your custom libraries, and that's why there is a lib folder as well. Because when you're mounting this, you're going to mount it. It's serverless, so it's going to take all these files with it and take them wherever it goes. So you got to make sure it's like a Docker, right? It, it has everything it needs to run wherever it's going. The main p.pi is going to be our main controlling uh, Python script. Requirements are where you're going to put the versions and the names of the Python, the Python libraries you need, and we're going to load them, and when we install them, it's going to install them in the lib. Also, uh, templates uh, is where you, uh, all your HTML pages, so it's going to be a hybrid of, of kind of HTML shells with, you know, uh, uh, variables that you can then, uh, you know, inject through your Python script. As well, sometimes you'll have a static folder as well that's going to, you know, uh, that could hold CSS files, all your images, anything that's static, right? We're not going to use it here because we want to keep it simple and streamlined. Okay, so everything here is uh, on GitHub. So let me just jump to GitHub. So the, the links are on the, the blog, of course. So, um, uh, you know, go there to get the actual link of this, um, uh, of the GitHub repo where the Flask code is. It's confusing because my blog is on GitHub and this is also on GitHub. And you'll see all the files you need to run this application uh, are, are here. You'll have the app.yaml, app config, the main.py, requirements, and your template file. So let's take a quick look at what we have. So the requirements, it's simply, the, the versions that you want to be installed uh, on your app engine. We want Flask, of course. These are all uh, Flask specific. Um, actually, everything here is Flask specific. Uh, there are a few uh, requests um, updates because uh, they, I had a problem running request, the, the request library, the regular request library on the Google Cloud. So, you know, you need to get the request dash tool belt also in order for it to work. Um, Let's take a quick look at the main.py. This is kind of the brains behind the, the, the operations. So, you know, we, you know, we have to bring all, everything we need, request, uh, JSON, uh, all our Flask stuff. The WT forms are our form fields that help you, uh, you know, look for a correct fields. Like if you have a phone number or a password, it's automatically gonna hide it. Phone numbers gonna make sure that all the numbers are there, etc. We don't really use much of that here. What's interesting here, um, we're using this function called line space, and I put the source of where I got it, and that's basically going to, uh, you give it your, your, your starting point, ending point, and it's gonna break it within this, you know, uh, 50 mile points, uh, uh, the, the longitude and latitude, so then we, we know how to get the different markers on the map. Uh, get distance between geo coordinates, it's gonna tell us, you know, the distance between you know, two sets of geo coordinates um, in miles, and the get best Yelp location is the function where you basically give a longitude and latitude and you tell it uh, what you're looking for and it's going to look uh, in, in this data set and return the best Yelp location for whatever business you're, you're looking for. And um, what else is um, uh, of interest? Um, background process. This is uh, kind of as it, as it names applies, it's what we're going to call from Ajax. So Ajax is going to call background process. And um, actually, let me just show that to you. I don't want to go too deep into this, but I think it's, it's interesting. That's definitely an important part of, oops. So the map is basically displays the Google map and uh, there is a JavaScript called fetch data, and this is what calls, right? This is what calls, this is the Ajax call, call that's going to call the background process. It's going to give it the current longitude and latitude, the term, and it's going to return, it's going to go here, and it's going to pass it back the new location it needs to go to. And that's important, right? Because uh, we, don't want to, we don't want to save a, a user's uh, information on the server. So every uh, client keeps track of who it is, where it is, and where it wants to go next. Like that, you could have simultaneous users 
you know, calling this function, and he doesn't care who it is, right? He says, okay, you called, you wanted the next position for these geo coordinates, here it is, next one. So you can have 10 browsers, the, the, the server side doesn't really keep track of who you are. And that's, uh, you know, that's something I wanted to keep it simple and also allow it to extend. Um, Get information. That's simply the the uh, um, you know the the um, uh, the, the page that um, the, the that receives the form where you tell it I want to go from here to here for this term, right? So when you hit submit, this is the form. This is the, the the page that that kind of extracts all that information, right? Departure point, destination point, search uh, search term, and is going to create kind of a starting and an ending point, and and then build your uh, map.html page, which is going to start a starting and ending point on the Google Maps. That's all it does. And then it's going to be, you know, built. Uh, each new point is going to be done through the background process. So that's, in a nutshell, that's really it. And um, it's so it's very, you know, uh, it's fairly simple. And if you think about it, uh, if you think about an architecture that's easy to use, where are you going to save yourself a lot of headaches? So I didn't want to keep any user information on the server. Just push all the the, the memory of where somebody is to the client like that you know you can have you know a thousand users not, and you have to worry about anything no no you know no need to keep any state on the server side okay so so now basically so the, the point here right is we have right we have everything we need right this works um, it contains everything we need to um, you know to build our trip uh, our, our Yelp trip. So let me show you how you can, uh, what are the easiest way uh, to run this. So I'm going to start afresh. I'm going to remove my current app engine and we're going to build it together from scratch like that. You see how it works. Get the prerequisites out of the way. You'll need a Google Cloud account. It's, uh, it, you, you will need a credit card number but it's going to give you $300 uh, dollars of credit hours, plenty for this exercise and for learning a bunch of things, you know, like running some TensorFlow models or whatever you want to do on Google Cloud without being charged. Just keep an eye right on the counter. Um, and uh, I've had mine for uh, quite a few months now and I still have, it still hasn't charged me anything. You need a Google Maps API key. That's free. Get one in order to get uh, Google Maps to work. And on Yelp, you will need to sign up for a Yelp account and get a developer API key, also free with, you know, some kind of, you know, 25K uh, queries per day, something, you know, very generous. So you won't need to worry about it. Um, once you have those things, we're set to uh, download, to clone uh, the data. There is a cool way of doing it, is you could clone it directly by going to, um, where is it? Uh, source repositories. It will allow you to kind of link your GitHub or your Bitbucket directly uh, through the UI. It's not important in our case because it's really important if it's your own and you want to kind of you know um, uh, you know sync the code, make changes here and then sync them back to GitHub. Right? We're not going to do here. We're just cloning it. So the simplest way to do it is just simply uh, call git clone. You know, rapid prototyping app engine Yelp. Do this, and that's going to create everything you need. Uh, to get going and then we'll, we'll see the into it right rapid and then you can look into it let me just clear this out a bit so we have some space it will give you everything we, you, you would see in the uh, on, on github right the config the app, app engine config app yaml the main.py we went through the requirements text and a template so you need to install um, the uh, the the requirements so, you, you know, in, in, in my, my walkthrough, I am, I'm, I'm telling people to uh, update the API keys first. That's fine as well. So, you know, well, let's, let's, follow, let's, let's follow along with, it, with um, the blog like that. We're all on the same page. So Vi will open up, it's a text editor, so it will open up the file directly in, uh, on the Cloud Shell command line, which is pretty cool. And I just opened it up here. And you'll see here, if you hit the I key, and now you're in insert mode, right? It confirms you're inserting. And here is where you put your, your Google API key. And underneath is where you put your Yelp API key. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to the, the, I'm gonna put the video on pause so I can do that, right? Because you don't want to share it with people, right? Because these are, uh, you know, other people could use it. And there's another place we have to do it too. So uh, let me do that and I'll come back and we'll do the other place and then we'll install the software and a few little things and we'll be ready to go. 
Okay, so I added my keys to the main.py file. And how do you get out of it? You hit escape, right? Colon WQ. So escape WQ. It's going to get you out of insert mode. W means write and quit means, you know, Q means quit. So now, right, we have updated our main.py. Change drive, so CD to templates. And do the same thing. Or let's see what we have here. Uh, do a vi on map.html. Same kind of concept here you'll see. Uh, here it tells you, you know, uh, add your Google API key. So you don't have to add your Yelp API key, just your Google API key. So let me do that. The other thing too, keep in mind that uh, people will see that key, right? So if, if you, you know, you don't want, you know, the world to use it, just keep in mind that they will see it for your Google Maps. You may not want to get a key just for public use. So let me put on pause just like I did before. Same thing we did before, right? Escape, colon, WQ, write and quit. And there we go. So now I have everything ready to go. I'm gonna CD back into my, uh, the, the, the basic, the base rapid dash prototyping dash app dot engine dash app dash engine dash Yelp folder, right? That's where you wanna be. So, you know, if you do LS list files, you should see exactly what I see. And now we need to inst do, install the requirements. So let's go. So we've done this, right? We've changed our API keys in three different places. Now we need to install the requirement files. That basically is going to just do a massive pip install, but it's going to put everything in the lib folder. That's what we want. So if I go ls cd lib, now we have everything we install, we have it there. Okay, so let me get out of there. And it needs to have that lib folder because it's going to go wherever the app engine is going to install uh, as a serverless mode, it's gonna, it needs all these installation files, just like a Docker would. Docker has everything it needs to, to run. And one more thing we need to do is gcloud init. And that initializes um, uh, your, your environment to run on gcloud. So if you haven't done it, it may be different. It will say, you know, just create a new configuration. In my, ca in my case, I already have it. So I'm gonna reinitialize, just step you through it. Um, you know, confirm your email address, confirm your, um, uh, your project. And to get your project is very easy. Just click here. And even though you may have named it, name it one day, it's going, name it one way, it's going to go with this ID, apt-memento-the dash dash, uh, number. So it's number one in this case. And it says basically, we are ready to go. Okay, now, we did we, we have G, we did the G cloud in it. We did the installation of the of the of the uh, the folder. We are ready to do a G cloud deploy. So let's do that. It's that simple, right? Once you have everything working, ready to go, you just do G cloud deploy on the folder inside the folder where all your files are. Especially you know the the YAML and the app config, so it knows what's going on. And it's going to say confirmation. Is this what you want? Yep. The yep, M, yep, yep, uh, app app.yaml is there and it's going to give you where it's going to run. So also keep in mind that if you have another um, application using that root URL of your project, it's going to kick them off and, and, and this one is going to take over, right? That's, that's, that's important to know. So if you have, you know, just create a new project with a new name, that's what I would recommend to do. So this, this is very fast. Um, it's a bit slower on a flexible environment because it's got to do a lot more customized work. That's why I like staying in a standard environment. And if you can do that, it's like super fast. And there you go, right? It, it, um, it'll tell, it gives you this handy command called gcloud app browse. So you don't even have to type the URL. Just, just do gcloud app browse and it's going to give you the URL. Click on it. And there it is. So we could do something different, right? Let's go from um, Seattle. Washington to, um, let's go to uh, uh, San Francisco. And let's look for gas station this time. Just to mix it up a bit. And there it goes. So you see it automatically sizes the map, which is cool. And uh, it's looking for uh, gas stations along the way within the 50 mile radius. And as you can see here, here it tells us uh, in the log, it tells us exactly what it's doing, right? As, it, as it's getting to San Francisco. And we've arrived, right? And we can click on, you know, on any of these. 
and there you go. You got a, a, a station rated with a 4.0. So this is very easy. The, there are a few differences uh, from other uh, platforms I've seen. For example, the App Engine Config, um, uh, you know, and, and the, and the app.yaml. Uh, like I've worked with Python anywhere. They kind of uh, abstract some of that work for you. The advantage with the App Engine is that it's serverless, so it's going to grow. So if you're expecting this is going to be a successful uh, website, it's going to allow it to handle basically any type of traffic. It's going to intelligently do it. You'll be charged more. You'll be charged accordingly according to the traffic, but it's going to grow with you. So very easy. We have I have no idea what OS it's running on. I don't care. I just want my you know my trip planner to work, and it does. Hope you enjoyed it.